Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT. Overview of the Strategic Planning Process. This is Lecture B, Components of an IT Plan. The objective for this lecture is to describe some of the typical component parts of an IT plan. An IT plan, sometimes called a Strategic Information Systems Plan, is a set of IT-specific programs or projects that help an organization achieve its business goals. Strategic Information Systems Planning is done with a group of cross-functional, meaning clinical, business, IT, and administrative staff. Often, people refer to the output of the Strategic Information Systems Planning process as simply the IT plan of an organization. Previously, you learned about the stages and steps of the Strategic Information Systems Planning process. While the presentation provided a view of the steps in the planning process, it did not describe the content of the plan. The content of an IT plan can vary widely, depending on the organization, the time it was created, and the resources committed to its creation. At a minimum, IT plans should include the following items. 1. A mission statement, or the purpose of the plan. 2. An analysis of the organizational strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, referred to as a SWOT analysis. A list of strategies, actions, projects, and resources responsible for implementing the plan. And a roadmap for the plan's completion. The timeline can range anywhere from 12 to 36 months or beyond. But because of the swift nature of technological change, IT plans are currently capped at around three years. Ideally, the mission statement will already have been written prior to the plan being developed. It is an essential part of the plan because it tells the readers about some of the fundamentals of the IT department. For instance, the mission statement is an opportunity for the IT department to describe who they are and what audience they are seeking to serve. This may be explicitly spelled out into constituent groups as in, we serve the clinical community, or we serve everyone in the organization. It also describes the problems and opportunities that the IT department is trying to address. This doesn't mean every single trash can fire that needs to be put out, but is more along the lines of making things easier, more efficient, cost-effective for the community it serves. Finally, it might contain a placeholder for how the IT department seeks to solve those problems by using innovation, curiosity, dedication, or speed. The mission statement lets the reader know that the IT plan is not just another document which outlines the projects that will be completed in the next one to two years. Rather, it lets the reader know that the IT department has defined a very prescriptive path for serving the larger organizational goals, and that it has purpose. Look at the mission statement on the screen. In this invented example, one may deduce that the IT department is comprised of experts in project management, information technology, and business analysts, answering the who are we question. The statement also suggests that the clinical customers of services provided by the IT department should not have to split their focus between patient care and the complex, fast-changing technological landscape because the IT department can do that for them. Finally, this IT statement answers the how are we going to do this question by offering a plan for how the IT department seeks to solve organizational problems through offering business analysis, project management, and information technology services. The second component part of the IT plan that you are likely to find is a SWOT analysis. As you can see here, SWOT is an acronym for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. The analysis of the organization is taken across each of the four categories. Let's look at each of them individually. 
Strengths can mean a number of things that your department can do better than others. In other words, why should the organization put its trust in its IT department? Some examples might include, your team of certified project managers have decades of experience in the hospital and have deep knowledge of the industry. Or, the background and educational level of the individuals working in the department are specifically tailored to help clinicians and patients have a better experience with technology. In the weakness quadrant, the IT department might list characteristics that might put it at a disadvantage over IT services offered by a competitor or external service provider. Examples of weaknesses in an IT department might include areas where the department could improve, such as having more individuals with technical certifications, or perhaps having an inadequate number of nurses in the department that can help translate IT problems for the organization, or an area where a competitor, perhaps an IT outsourcing organization, could provide better services because of the depth of their technical expertise. When analyzing opportunities, an IT department should ask itself what opportunities or trends can it capture. For instance, how can the IT department leverage its collective IT knowledge and years of experience in the industry to develop a new patient-facing mobile app that could be marketed on a broader scale? Or maybe the IT department could enhance its reputation in the community or organization by translating new and sometimes complicated government IT requirements into actionable change through presentations at industry meetings. Sometimes organizations will define their opportunities by looking at how they can trade on the strengths they identified. Alternatively, an IT department may look at whether or not it can turn around one or more of its weaknesses into an opportunity. Finally, we arrive at the fourth quadrant of the SWOT analysis, which is analyzing threats to the IT department or the organization that could have adverse effects on its ability to perform or meet its target goals. Threats for an IT department might include it being underfunded or short-staffed, in comparison to what the hospital would like to do in the near future. For instance, if an organizational goal of a health system is to implement wireless biomedical devices on seven nursing units, but the IT department only has one resource, that is, one of its staff, that is truly knowledgeable in wireless technology, the organization's overall goals of improved efficiency and patient safety through the use of the wireless biomedical devices could be compromised. Another threat to an IT department might be that a competing hospital is able to offer attractive patient-facing IT services like a patient portal where a patient can make appointments or look at his or her labs or fill a prescription for a medication. Another competitive advantage might be that a competing hospital has the ability to sync information from a patient's wearable health device, like a Fitbit, to a home-based patient health record offered by the hospital. When organizations analyze their strengths and weaknesses, we're talking about things that are within our control, like a budget or ability to allocate resources to a project. These are items that are internal to our organization. When organizations analyze opportunities and threats, these are said to be attributes of the environment in which our particular organization exists. So, threats may be listed as something that can only happen in a particular region, such as EHR vendors' difficulty in traveling to many remote areas of the U.S. for implementations, or something about the outside environment's impact on our organization. External opportunities might also include something that is unique to a specific environment, such as a hospital located on the Gulf Coast, having the capacity to open up more dermatology clinics because of the nature of the patient population. While you will more than likely see a SWOT analysis in an IT strategic plan, it should not be considered a complete analysis 
but a starting point. Because of the way items are generated in a SWOT analysis, some may see them as arbitrary. Likewise, other items may carry more importance based on the stakeholder's position of power within the organization. The converse of this, of course, is that no items are prioritized or weighted, so that IT staff do not know where to allocate their time and effort. Finally, as Picton and Wright suggest, some items could fit in any box or multiple boxes. Remember that some items will fluctuate between boxes. A threat can be an opportunity. This slide represents visually the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of how a new technology initiative may affect an organization. You can see the range in the quadrants, and they go from, is this IT project even worth it, to, ideal, we should seize this opportunity. Each project will have value to the person or department that proposed it, but when put in context with the organization's strategic objectives, it gets examined in a larger context. If an organization is in steep debt, the nice-to-have projects will probably get put on the back burner. Likewise, projects that appear to be high value at first glance, but also end up being high risk and high cost, may be evaluated as too risky for the organization to undertake. It's extremely important for an organization to assess every technology purchase in context with the overall portfolio of applications already in place. This evaluation should be a constant or ongoing part of the planning process. Many of you will be familiar with a Project Management Office, or a PMO. As IT organizations become more complex and pervasive within healthcare organizations, some projects will be related and even necessary for others to begin. This is when a program management office will be necessary. A program management office coordinates multiple projects that serve to attain a common organizational goal. Internally, in a PMO, one will find countless and detailed project management plans, tools, and techniques being used to track progress. Externally, information about the organization's portfolio of projects should be represented in the IT plan. This section helps the organization understand which projects have dependencies, which have the most risks, which actions will be taken and in what order, and who will do all the work. This section of the IT plan can be labeled or cited in a number of different ways, but it must be contained within the plan so that the reader knows the explicit outcome of the SWOT analysis. Here we see an example of how the individual IT projects are broken down by stakeholder, project manager, duration, and status. It is important to have a listing of individual projects. In the previous slide, we saw an example of how individual projects, project managers, and stakeholders are listed in a plan. The list should be complete and as detailed as possible. But how are all those projects connected? Who is looking at resource allocation and budgets and timelines across projects? In this slide, we see what is often referred to as an IT governance model. It shows how various stakeholders, whether clinical, technical, or administrative, all have a role in IT decision-making. At first glance, it seems cumbersome, and you may wonder how decisions ever get made. But once an organization decides which projects it will fund and implement, it must have a structure for deciding how and when outcomes from these decisions are coordinated and continue to move forward. In this slide, we see a month-by-month -month report of how the project will be implemented. This view allows both the stakeholder and the IT department to have a shared understanding of what will happen each month. You will note many dependencies early in the project. For instance, workflow analysis in January and February directly impact the technical and human resource requirements that populate the RFP. The RFP responses will be evaluated by the same team that was involved in the needs and workflow analysis later in April. 
In the previous slide, we looked at the activities across several months for one project. When a strategic plan is created, it often has several, if not dozens, of individual projects that must be carefully coordinated and tracked so that projects are not competing for the same resources. In this example, we see the three sample projects spaced out on a timeline moving forward. It is important for the organization to see the dependencies between the projects and for executives to ensure that obstacles which could prevent projects from starting on time are removed. This concludes the end of this unit. Overview of the strategic planning process. Many organizations will undergo a strategic planning process only to end up with a loose set of goals and ideas for how to move forward. An IT plan is an outgrowth of the organization's planning process, and as such, it should be carefully and clearly documented so that everyone knows which projects are being implemented and how they support the organization's goals. A common pitfall of some IT plans is that they are not clearly communicated or understood by stakeholders. So, an astute IT leader should take time to explain the IT plan until it is understood and accepted and the organization can then move forward.